Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome today. This is Latasha Martin and I am your host of Career Chats. I am so excited about today's episode, probably because I have an amazing woman here today. She is a high capacity woman that I am just honored and just blessed to know. Uh, before we bring her on to the interview, I just wanna do a couple of announcements reminding you that if you'd like to be a guest on Career Chats, you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, there's information for you to reach out to me. You can go to info at Bonsway.com, or you can send me a message on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you'd like to, to become a guest. Now, if you are watching us on YouTube, if you will go ahead and follow and subscribe, you'll get career chats and more. If you're on Periscope and you just want to give us some hearts, you can do that too. And then if you are on Facebook, you are in multiple places, so you can just do whatever you like. You can share, start watch parties, and just join in on the fun. So I hope today that you are inspired when you hear this amazing woman's journey, her career journey. And so let me just go ahead without further ado to bring her on screen. I'm going to bring her on with us so we can start this party. Let's go. Let's go. Hi, Jennifer. How are you today? I am great. How are you? I am doing good. I know it takes us a moment to get here. I'm like, all this stuff that's going on, what is happening? But let's just go ahead and jump in because I will say from one busy woman to another, it is always amazing to start these. So I know this is where it usually makes my guest blush, but I want to go ahead and read your interview and then we'll jump right into our questions. So after graduating from college, Dr. Jennifer Jones Bryant, which I just found out about this whole doctor thing a couple of seconds ago, um, she moved up the ranks quickly, going from her first position as a clerk typist during the day and a janitor at night to an executive director role. Now, that is amazing, but it didn't happen overnight because her career journey was 31 years with the federal government, and it spanned into many functional areas, included budgeting, finance, human resources logistical support, strategic planning, and strategic communications. Obviously, Dr. Jennifer is a lifelong learner and high performer. Um, this has led the federal agency teams to receive their first ever agency honorary awards in customer service within the public sector. Jennifer served on the woman executive groups for and subcommittees supporting the White House Council on Women and Girls. Now that's a big deal. Currently, Dr. Jennifer serves as the director for one of the largest banks that has recently ranked as a Fortune 100 best companies to work for in the United States, Canada, and the UK. Now, Dr. Jennifer Jones, she wouldn't just stop there because she is what we call a dualpreneur. And we're going to get into that when she tells her story, where she's an executive founder of Reaching Within, an Empowerment Journey, LLC. She is a best-selling author, an award-winning award certified life career strategist, mentor, motivational speaker, and I'm sure and more. She helps women accelerate to the next level in their career. She has over 25 years of demonstrated experience helping individuals and teams in the federal government and corporate become high performers and more marketable through, their, through her leadership. Her educational background and personal experiences have given her a broad base from which she can help her clients to find their inner strength to create and revise their personal and professional journey in life to achieve their, their results. She impacts others through her Empowerment Journey podcast, where she shares her, shares her stories and stories of others, how they overcome personal and professional challenges in their lives and they, they live their lives unapologetically, unashamed and confidently. In addition, can you believe there's more? But yes, there is. Dr. <laughs> Jennifer, and she appears on TV, podcasts. She's been featured in global magazines. She's regularly received speaking invitations from the federal agencies, academia, and community, organ community organizations. Now, this is just a glimpse because when I got her bio, I said, okay, now, I know there's more to you. Like, you have a personal life in addition to doing all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the first question because the first question she'll be able to share some of that information with us. So the first question is, 
Tell us about your own career journey. You can go back as far as you'd like, because I know you have many, many years of, let's say decades of experience. How about that? You just don't look like it. (laughs) That's right. I started at age three. That's always my joke. Age three. Okay. Oh, gosh. So look, a lot of times people ask me, you know, do I sleep? Absolutely. I sleep. I still count my hours. Um, I want to make sure I get in at least seven to eight hours of sleep every day. So talking about my journey. Yeah, I did start off as a clerk typist um, in the federal government, but I want to go back just a tad bit further. My entry into the government was um, could be some would say is unique, but then again, it's not. What I try to tell people, always show up as your best self. Always know that you're interviewing every single day. I got my first introduction to the federal government by riding the subway. Yes, you heard that correctly. I was on my way to a career job fair and it was a woman sitting nearby me and we just struck up a conversation about I don't even remember what it was about, but it certainly wasn't about like work or job, but she got to see who I was in my personality. And so when it was time for us to get off, she introduced me herself and told me her name, asked me for mine and said, where was I going? And I told her I was going to a federal career job fair. And she said, hey, I'm from Department of Treasury. You are hired. Oh, Don't go to any other table. So this is something I always am committed to sharing with people. You are interviewing every single day, whether you're in the grocery store, riding on a train, walking down the street. You never know where people are from. So don't assume anything. Um, So I did start as a clerk typist and I worked during the day and um, as a clerk typist and clean (laughs) toilets at night, believe it or not, in that same government building. And executives noticed that this woman is hardworking. We have some overtime available. Let's approach her and see if she wants to do that. And they did. So I shifted from being a janitor to working in doing overtime assignments. But guess what? That kept me visible. And when opportunities avail themselves, like moving up the ranks, they came to me and said, hey, would you be interested in this opportunity? So that and and I continued to go to school at night at the same time. Uh, while working full time. But the key to that was I had um, mentors and I also had supervisors who were interested in my career and professional growth that I sat down with them to let them know where I was going, where I wanted to go, where, where I aspired to be and ask for training dollars. So half of my undergrad was paid for by the federal government. All of my graduate studies were paid by the federal government and all of my executive leadership training was um, paid for by the federal government. So that's my story. So in my 20s, I did accelerate from being a clerk typist to being uh, associate director. And then I began to work, you know, in different assignments. And then a year and a half ago, I retired from the federal government and I wasn't done yet because then the bank came knocking on my door and it was a newly created position. They said, hey, would you like to be interested in doing this? I love that. And one of the things that I know you left off a little bit of that is, is that you spent all that time working your craft, expanding your skills. And so in addition to the bank knocking at your door, you talk about being in that dualpreneur. So there's some things that you love. And we're going to hear so many details about that towards the end. And I'm sure people like on the end of their seat because they're like, wow, (laughs) does this woman sleep? What does she like? How does she get seven to eight hours? I can't get three. Okay. (laughs) So that is amazing. And I love that. You probably have a lot of rigor. So if you were to say there's a couple of things that we wouldn't know about what it took for you to be successful on your journey, what would a couple of those things be that we just wouldn't know? Well, I would tell you that um, I'm transparent about this now. I I went through a hard, I had a traumatic, um, young, traumatic life personally. So that's why I'm so focused on helping people, whether I'm on corporate, whether I'm in my, you know, my business, 
telling them the skills and what they need to put in place, the tools they need to put in place to overcome personal challenges. I, my drive in the federal government came from survivalship, meaning I was in survival mode. I was always waiting for the other shoe to drop. I left home at the age of 17 um, in my senior year in high school because my mom threw bullets against my um, locked door saying that she was going to kill me. And she actually suffered from severe um, bipolar. And so it was tough for me. So I had to care for her from where I was at a distance care for her. So my hustle looked a little bit different. My hunger looked a little bit different. And so for me, there wasn't a lot of playtime. Now, don't get me wrong. I enjoyed life now. Don't get me wrong. (laughs) I enjoyed life. But that is something that people sometimes don't um, they think that those high achievers or those who may be in executive roles, that personal things are going on. No, traumatic stuff. And I didn't realize I was um, suffered from trauma. I didn't realize that Latasha until I went through my executive leadership program with American University a few years ago. It took an executive coach to sit me down and say, look, look, (laughs) you have gone through a lot of trauma and you've always waited for that other shoe to drop. Now it's time for you. You got the leadership stuff down pat. Now is the time for you to work on self. So the key that I would tell people is it's important that you work on self because if you don't, it will manifest itself on your job. It will manifest itself in your personal life and in other places as well. So I definitely want to stress that piece, Latasha. Wow. And I didn't even know. I heard a little bit snippets about there was some trauma, but I wasn't aware of the details. And one of the things that I love that you shared just in a moment is people look at high performing people and think just because they don't look like what they've gone through, that they didn't go through much. And so I love that transparency. I think that is amazing because definitely I would not have known that about you, Dr. Jennifer. (laughs) Oh, look, look, there is more to this story. So that's why I tell people that they will, they will get through it. They will get through it. Yes. So that brings me to an interesting next question, especially because you kind of started there just a moment ago, which is if you had the opportunity to talk to high school Jennifer, who was in survivor mode, what would you say to her? What I would say to her is, and I'm actually reflecting back, you know, I'm going to that place in time because, you know, I get emotional and hopefully I won't get emotional on the screen with you because it was such a lonely year because no one knew what I was going through during the, you know, nighttime. Um, What I will say is find a mentor early on. Find a trusted soul that you can work with and, and help me to figure out how to navigate because you're not given a compass right? You're not given the steps of what you do in life or what you do when you have a mom who is suffering from severe uh, manic depression and bipolar. Um, And so that's what I will say that, you know, to learn how to lean on a strong support system. I had some folks there, um, but I didn't realize the importance of having a mentor and also having a therapist. I uncovered those secrets once I got older and I started telling some folks about what was going on in my life. I love that. And and that is, you know, again, one of those things is those high. And when I use the term high capacity women, it's the women that just get it done. And so, so, (laughs) so we don't realize that we, you know, we need to burn that cape, right. And we need help. Um, So I love that you're sharing that because actually when we go into one of the biggest learning lessons, I'm actually changing your question a bit because, (laughs) because you're in the same space as I, and I think it's so funny because people are like, well, why would you bring somebody on? that does the same work you do because there is room for all of us. Okay. And so (laughs) one of the things, you know, like I know when it comes to that help, and we say this biggest learning lesson, I want to actually veer you to talking about 
how do people like ask for that help? How do you get those mentors? How do you get those sponsors? Because most times women, especially women of color, we don't have those automatically. There's just a population. You're like, wait, what's a mentor? Like you find that out years into your career. And you're like, well, how did you get one when you first started? <laughs> how did you get one? So if you could just touch a little bit about, you know, some of those mentors and, and how that really helped you along your career journey. Oh, let me tell you, it, it took, I just had some amazing supervisors along my career journey. And when I revealed to them, where I was trying to go in terms of aspirations, because my first supervisor, he uh, later um, got promoted to be the secretary of treasury. So every step that he took, he took me with him. And then at a certain point, because he was an economist and because he had like so many other different skill sets, he was like, okay, we got to part ways now, so to speak. <laughs> so... <laughs> So he knew that my life was all in like the administrative uh, administration and, you know, other uh, business operation um, um, portfolio. He turned me on to different people. He's like, look, you need to talk to this person and that person. And so what I started doing, I started sitting down having informational interviews with folks. And so the guy that I saw in a position where I aspired to be, he said, I asked him if I could sit down with him. I wasn't shy. And he was like, oh, sure. And he told me what I needed to do to get to where he was. Now, understand, it's not a light switch. You don't get there just like that. Right. So he helped me with my career trajectory. He, We sat down and I came up with an individual development plan in terms of what my next steps were. And along that journey, I started picking up other mentors. I saw uh, other people saw things in me that I may not have seen in myself. And I also had that mentor who tapped me on the shoulder and people laugh about this. They were like, um, girl, you need to stop all that shopping right? And you need to start putting some money in your thrift savings plan, right? And wow. I so am grateful at 51 that someone did that, you know, said that to me, because otherwise I would not have been able to retire from the federal government um, a year and a half ago before the age of 50, right? Yeah. And so I am grateful. So what I'm saying is you will pick them up along the way. Now, sponsors, oh my God. Yes. Sponsors and mentors can be one of the same, but you and I both know that sponsor woo, is your champion, <laughs> your champion that will go in a room, will come to you and say, hey, I see this opportunity where you will be great at. And so and I will tell you, too, and, and hopefully I'm not overstaying my welcome here, but I, I, I do want to tell you this, Latasha, that when I transitioned from government to working for a bank, it was rough. It was that track. Woo! I had to get deinstitutionalized. Do you hear me? From like with this interview today, right? I had to put on this blazer and this, this cute little blouse. But typically, with the bank, I wear swag all day and some jeans. And so I had to transition from wearing suits and all that corporate looking stuff to to swag stuff. But what I want to say is. I didn't understand some of the workings of corporate and I got a mentor that was outside of my organization who served as my sounding board, but she also helped me to navigate the workings. She was, she's a senior director in the HR area. So she was able to help me and she served as my sponsor. So now I've been elevated in different roles inside of the bank. I love that. And you know what? And I think, too, that's just such a great thing, because as I mentioned to people, even and we're going into our closing remarks, you know, knowing that you do that work and I do that work. I love the word that you use sponsors outside of the organization, because what so many people don't realize is that the majority of career decisions that are made specifically when you go from that individual entry level individual contributor over the bridge those decisions are not made in that interview. Those decisions are made on, do, do you know Jennifer? Yes. What did you see in Jennifer? <laughs> well, I know, because the one time I saw Jennifer and she, those are the conversations. And I call it the hidden job network. Those are where yes. 80, 70 to 80% of the decisions are being made when you're not in the room. And so the question we'll ask is, well, what do people say about you? 
when you're not in the room. And if you don't know, you better figure that out. So I love that. So in our closing piece here, we're running over just a bit. If you could give us just 20 seconds to tell us about, you know, the coaching and the strategy. And I love that you're saying you work with people to personally and professionally say, no matter what's going on over here, like we can help you with your breakthrough. So if you want to share a little bit about your, what you do as your business, along with coupling that into your workspace, I would love for you to share that again, just about 20 seconds sure. um, as we wrap up for today. Absolutely. So it, um, as an executive director of Reaching Within an Empowerment Journey, I help women to accelerate to the next level. And I do that through, you know, resume prep, interview prep, professional development, leadership development, and I'm able to um, transfer what I do in my business to what I do in the bank, because as as the director of associate and um, experience at, at the bank, I'm bringing all those transferable skill sets there um, in terms of leadership development, mentorship. Um, I could go on with a whole list of things, but. The key is, Latasha, is is coming up, coming in and showing up as your whole entire self. So that's what I love about this interview that you allowed me to share not only my my corporate experience, but also what I do in my personal. Absolutely. And I thank you so much for finding time out of your busy schedule to join us today. And like I said, I just, you know, connect with Dr. Jennifer, make sure you follow her. Um, I just feel like the more we support each other, the more we can help more people as they go in and they really invest in themselves. Cause that was one of the pieces we didn't talk about today, Absolutely. but invest in your development and even rallying and figuring out, well, how can that company pay for some stuff that that development that I need? <laughs> and this is the other Other thing that I tell people, you do the things you don't want to do so you can do the things you love to do. But in that, in that, you need to have some of those uncomfortable conversations and allow people to have them with you as well. So I thank you so much for joining today. I'm sure we'll do more work together so I can learn more about the story. And I thank you so much. And you have a great day. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to put you back in the green room and I'm going to close out today. Thank you so much, Dr. Jennifer. You're very welcome. Thank you. So thank you guys so much for joining us today at Career Chats. And again, one more time on the bottom of the screen, if you desire to be a guest on Career Chats or even have some topics that you'd like us to find guests to speak on, share that information with us through email at info at On Facebook, my uh, our business page is Latasha115959. You can like and follow so you can get alerts about our Career Chats. And I just want to thank you for being with us today. Have an amazing amazing day and we will see you again tomorrow in another platform. So enjoy. Bye-bye.